Hello everyone and welcome back to Messing with the Shuttle in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. In this video I want to see what happens when we take the Giulio Dondi shuttle and the launch script and re-entry script and we overload the shuttle. Uh, first of all we will launch with its maximum payload, regular maximum payload. Uh, I've said to 25 tons, it could probably do 26 tons. Um, we're going to bring the full 25 tons back down. Now technically the shuttle could only bring down about 12 tons, or at least that's what it was supposed to be able to do. Uh, and in this case we're going to bring back the entire 25 tons and see what happens. After that I am going to try to launch it with a uh, too heavy payload and we'll see how that goes. But in this case the first test is going to be mainly a re-entry test. Though of course this is the first time I'm launching with the full-ish payload for the shuttle and we'll see how it uh, does getting into its orbit. So, without further ado, let's uh, take it out to the launch pad. Alright, here we go. Not expecting any surprises here. And up it goes. One other thing I have done is added volumetric clouds to this particular install. Not actually punching through the layer of clouds in this case, though. Okay, we're getting close to booster set here. Yeah, the volumetric clouds obviously good at like airplane level, but it depends on you whether you think it's particularly better than a 2D version at this altitude or higher. At this zoom it's fine, but at this zoom I don't know about the shading on that particular panel. For some reason that's a little bit weird at this level. Huh. Strange. Should roll over at some point. We're just going to a 30 degree inclination incidentally. The shuttle couldn't carry 25 tons to the ISS inclination, for instance. That it was limited to about 15 to 16 tons. Okay, main gen engines out and external tank separation. Okay, those doors closed. Okay, it is done. So I have to do the rest. Let's close that. And we've got the apoapsis I wanted. We're just gonna circularize at one and a half hours and wait for an appropriate time to come back down. We're going to Wait until we're back in line with Cape Canaveral, so we're not going to have any cross-range requirement. Okay, ignition. One of the reasons I think uh, people have said that they don't quite like the look of the volumetric clouds in orbit is, generally, the, the clouds, because of their reflectivity, you can't really see the bumpiness of them as much. They look a lot smoother from orbit than this sort of implies. And that's just because of the sheer glare of them reflecting the light. We don't really get the glare from them. And so it catches a lot more of the shadows and makes them the way they are here. As opposed to the way you see them in images of space. Okay, and that's one and a half hours. Alrighty. So now we are going to wait a day and then we'll come back down with the 25 tons. And just to be clear, we are expecting things to go wrong at this, you know, I mean, in fact, we might even be disappointed if they don't go wrong because the shuttle is not supposed to be able to carry 25 tons. So we are expecting bad things to happen. Will bad things happen? That's the question. Now, well, might be even too close right now. I'm not gonna make this hard on it. I'll give it uh, give it the entry interface angle that it wants instead of trying to go steeper. 
We're only going to modify one thing. And that is the mass coming down. Okay, well, we pretty much have to do a maneuver right now, so this is what we're going to have. And we're... Okay, node... Node... Going for 26 kilometer periapsis, that's what we'll say. We're just going to do it right now. Not the most accurate, but time is pressing. I didn't waste any fuel though. Uh oh. We might be coming down extra heavy because of the extra fuel too. I can dump some fuel though, I think. So if we want to do that, we can. Okay, that's 26, like it said we should have. Um, we'll just, I mean, if we're gonna come down overloaded, we're gonna come down overloaded, so. We're gonna have a little bit more of that stuff there. I don't know how bad our balance is right now. Um, I'm gonna save. If I think it's a balance problem rather than a being overloaded problem, I'll dump some of the propellant. So I'll save right here so that I have a chance to revise that if that seems to be the problem. Okay, well with that said, let's go around. Entry interface. Okay, OPS3 is started. And we're going to have that to be auto, PSC, well, whatever runway you feel like. I did set the left air brake to be inverted. Seems to be necessary. Let me. Wow, we already have an overheating indicator. That's probably not a good sign. This light on the horizon. We haven't started turning or anything yet. Okay, it is beginning to turn at 82 kilometers. Still overheating about the same amount right now, just under 80 kilometers in altitude. Okay, 75 kilometers. The clouds look better at this level. This is good. Uh, but no, overheating is about the same. We're at 6.7 kilometers per second. Everything seems to be on track, it's really a matter of that overheating. Okay, we have a roll reversal here. That uh, overheating indicator is really at the edge there. Well, over here it's not so bad. Even if this manages to survive, maybe it's like too close to engineering margins or something like that. It might not be a fault of the simulator or the model. Uh, it might be just that NASA would feel like this is maybe going a bit too far or something. But for our purposes, it might be interesting to be able to carry this much down. Like, for an abort with the payload, maybe. I mean, it wouldn't be coming back like this, but... There's potential to use this. I wonder what they would do if they had to carry this full load. Maybe they really could carry this full load down, and they just didn't want to tell us. Okay, we have some flame effects. Still on track. Overheating definitely still there. Okay, I think the overheating is going down now. We're below 60 kilometers. Head a left over here, or north if you will. And we're still in line with Cape Canaveral and everything. Okay, now turning to the south. Still no problems, and the overheating indicator is almost gone. The flame effects are oh so diminishing. Okay, Florida just barely in sight as we were at 50 kilometers. I guess let's see how it lands with the extra mass in. But my current feeling is that we have failed to throw it off. 
All right, Cape Canaveral in sight there. 40 kilometers now, 1,500 meters per second. About Mach 5, well, Mach 4.7 and 4.6 there, as it says. Okay, passing overhead now. Let's see how it does. Looks all right to me so far. Come on, shuttle. You can do it. <laughs> no pre-deployment of the parachute this time. Can we finally get a nice clean landing here? A little bit further to the right, please. Um, it's sort of trying there. Uh, okay, I guess it's okay. Well, it seems a little bit short. Well, maybe it'll be all right. I should just set the uh, threshold a little bit further into the runway, maybe. Oh, well, I guess this is okay. Uh, uh oh, it was going up a little bit. Uh, now it's pitching down. You know, you're not. That's that's not. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, well, um, that was unexpected. It looks like maybe it's well. <laughs> we'll ignore this part. Um. It looks like maybe right for the end portion, its balance gets bad. I'm not sure. Well, that was not the part that I thought we were going to have a problem because it was overweight. But I think that was actually because it was overweight. I have no idea how it lost that engine considering what would be colliding with what. But anyway, um, yeah, okay. That's strange. Well, okay, fine. Uh, I don't know what to think about that, to be honest, but that's how it is when you're experimenting with things. So we'll set that aside for now, and we are going to see what happens if I overload the shuttle on launch, and we're going to do it pretty severely. We're going to try and uh, put in, well, let's start mildly and then work our way up. Uh, let's see what happens with 30 tons instead of 25 tons and see if it can carry that. It's quite possible that it can, it's just not within margins and stuff like that, or for abort, and... The the abort requirements are, you know, complicated. So, that's 30 tons, but let's see, let's see what happens to it. You never know, as we just saw. Okay, so in this case, launch is of interest. And we're just running the script as before, 30 degree inclination. What is the limit? What is the actual amount where this shuttle is going to have problems? Just getting into orbit. Well, view enjoyment with the volumetric clouds here. Okay, booster set. They still need to fix that. I will at some point uh, try out the aborts, but I'll have to see exactly how that's done. will be yet another way to mess with the shuttle. The Ascent Guidance has that capability, well, probably in conjunction with some of the other scripts. In this case, whether it's working out or not is something we're only going to really figure out right at the end, right? Alright, rollover is completing. I'm going to have to make sure that we've got the shuttle centaur available for really interesting abort possibilities. <laughs> that, that, that was going to be a bit of a hectic scenario for the shuttle abort when it carries the centaur in. Of course, they never did that. After Challenger, they nixed the whole shuttle centaur thing. But it would have been nice, and also for Kerbal Space Program purposes, probably necessary. 
we do want to use the shuttle in more thorough capacity than they actually did. Okay, last little bit to orbit. Ooh, I, it said like 36 meters per second right there. Hold on a sec. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, let's wait for it to finish. Okay. Um, I can't actually switch to the external tank. I wanted to see how much fuel was actually left in it. Uh, let's see our orbit. Well, that's a nominal orbital insertion for what I set it to. So that's not a problem. But it seemed like we had very little, but I can't switch to the external tank for some reason. Let me see. Oh, cannot switch vessels while in the... Wait, it's paused though, so it's like trying to switch. Oh, okay, it did not switch because we were still in the atmosphere. Well, we can wait. Okay. Switch to. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't think we can carry too much more and be safe, but let's see what happens if we do. <laughs> let's see what happens. What, what does the script do exactly? It's a little bit choppy here. What does the script do exactly if we have an overwhelming amount? Let's say 36 tons. I think we'll probably push it over the limit there. We only have one ton of uh, liquid oxygen. Well, it's a little bit more than one ton, but combined we're talking about less than two tons of propellant left. So we're not carrying much more than that. Okay, 36.12 tons. Okay, so last test for this video, I think. 36 tons. Let's see what happens. Got a little pause at the start there. That can happen. Up we go. Okay, looking good. Getting ready for booster set. Off they go. Just checking the control surfaces. After all, if it's a little bit overloaded, it won't get as high as it normally does at booster set, and the aerodynamics might be sufficiently different that the uh, boosters go awry. Well, looking at the numbers, I don't think it's going to be able to get to orbit on the external tank fuel. So, what is it going to do? Okay, sort of getting into the final phase here. I mean, it won't be too far from orbit, it's just a little bit far from orbit. Well, there we are. Negative periapsis. Possibly you'll just hand it to me. I think I think it's just gonna make me do it. <laughs> so okay, it's making me do it. All right, be that way. Well, we know it didn't quite land safely trying to come down with a heavier payload, so it's not like I'm gonna try that with a 36 ton payload. But let's see, let's see if we can make orbit here. It's gotta take a chunk. And what we'll do is we'll kick out the payload and see if we can come back with it empty. How about that? Then we will have delivered the payload to orbit, this 36 ton payload, in sort of an unconventional way. But we would still have brought it to orbit and everything. Okay, that's the first OMS burn, and then we will circularize. It is taking quite a lot of our fuel. We used more than half of it just getting to this level. Okay, ignition. Nope, ignition. 
Now, even though I thought I set the runway correctly, maybe this time it thought it was too high. And that was the problem. It's been complicated. <laughs> it's been complicated, the setting of the runway thing. It's been a little bit iffy. I had the elevation at 77. I could just... And I think while we were testing, we came up with that. But maybe it'd be better to have it lower now? I don't know. Or maybe it could have been the balance. It's tough to say. Anyway, we are in orbit. That's how much OMS fuel it took. And we are going to kick out the cargo. And then wait a day and bring it back down. Now we're getting a little bit chop here. Part of this is assessing the stability of this install with the volumetric clouds. As there's actually a lot of stuff in this install. Okay, well, time to come down. If it has the same problem this time, we'll know that it's because of the runway height setting as opposed to the balance, because this should be properly balanced at this point. I'm not expecting this to be an issue. Okay, very much giving it what it wants this time, and we've got a periapsis of 32.6 kilometers. But I think as we time warp, it's going to change. But maybe I should just do it as I've got it there. All right, I'll adjust it. I'm not going to use the planner anymore. We're just going to go to what we've got here. 32.7 now. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay, that was a little bit too much. 32.7. Okay, it should be fine. It should be fine. I mean, we've got fuel. We're not coming down with any cargo this time. Okay, and running it. And auto, auto, auto. And we are all set in theory. Okay, sunrise, and we're at 90 kilometers, and we can see there's an overheating thing there. Uh, we'll see how high it gets, but my expectation is it's not going to be as bad as with the heavily loaded return. Well, it, it has quite a bar there. Maybe it's not so different. Here as we have started to turn. We started turning earlier. Well, here we go for the critical portion. It has done all the normal things during re-entry, as expected. Anyway, the point is that we can deliver 36 tons to orbit and potentially get back down, but can it land this now? And if it can't land this, is it because we don't have the runway height right? I mean, that's the only real potential in this case. It's not because we have bad balance, because we're basically empty. So the balance will be all right. And if it turns out that it can't land properly, well, then that's because the runway height was not set correctly. And in which case, maybe the one that was heavily loaded could have landed properly as well. We are about to see. Okay, here we come. It sort of looks a lot like the approach from last time. Like, I feel like it's super early. Uh, and high. It's definitely high. Yeah, it's definitely because it's too high, not... We didn't adjust that enough, I think. Okay, well, I managed to get down, but yeah, I think it's uh, it's reading the runway height as too high, even though we had tried to adjust that. So maybe the other one would have worked, but at least this one that it actually got back down. But with the extra load, probably wouldn't have. Okay, well, it's sort of going off to the side. I have to break, break. Oh, 
Okay. All right. All right. You're done. You're done. I guess it doesn't do ground steering much. So anyway, there you have it. We have uh, pushed the shuttle to the limit as far as payload capacity is concerned and seen the results. With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.